11 through 14 I needed help with? Um, can you? 14? You got it. So 14, you have x equals negative 3, and you also have x equals 2 thirds. So this first one is just going to become x plus 3 because you'd add 3 to both sides. The second one, make sure you multiply both sides by 3 first to get rid of the fraction. And then this becomes 3x minus 2. And then FOIL it out. So you're going to get uh, 3x squared uh, minus 2x plus 9x minus 6. And so that's going to give me 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. And that's all you'd have to do for 14. What else did you see on those first ones? Are we good? And then, was it 18 and... What were the two? 19 and 20? Alright, so there might be some questions on 19. So it says solve the system. Okay? Now, does everyone feel comfortable that the system of equations, you have both x and y in both of the equations? Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Alright, so we're going to jump into our buddy Desmos. Um, yeah. Hey, good to see you, bud. Yeah. Hey, did you get the homework? Yep, I got both of them. Oh, yeah, baby. What is it? That one, is it easier to just plug both, both equations into Desmos? Yeah. Is it easier to just substitute a little bit? Nope. You know, but I'd plug both in Desmos just as is. Um, and then I, the, the greatest thing about Desmos, and I don't know if you've realized this yet, if you use the TI graphing calculators, you have to set it as Y equals. So you have to rearrange stuff. On Desmos, you just plug in with what you have. So you get x squared is equal to y minus 20. And you might not see it right away. Let's uh, make that thicker. And then I'm going to graph also x plus y equals four, 410. Okay, so then I have to kind of search for it. So I, I would probably, so I'm seeing the red if I start zooming out. Oh, I see the blue now. Oh, cool. Okay, so if you take a look at Desmos once you get there, you're looking for where the two locations that it crosses the x-axis on both of them. So both of those answers, the whole answer, both the x and y, the whole point would be the answers. So negative 20.255 comma 430.255 and 19.255 comma 390.745. I'm sure there's fractional equivalents to those, but I'm okay with the decimal. Okay? And that's how I would get through number 19. Does that help those of you? Did anyone struggle on 19? Um, well, I did it a different way, and I got a completely different answer um, that came out as seeming correct. Oh. oh, you know what? I, I didn't plug the right top equation in. should have been minus 300 on top. There it goes. So now, now that should be better. So negative 11, 421, and 10, comma 400. Is that close? Hey, then you did it right. So when Sturb doesn't plug in the right numbers, you know, because, you know, I've been smelling fecal matter that's going down the hallway all day. So I hope somebody slipped and fell in it, though. That's just funny. I mean, the girl came to my science class crying about it. So. <laughs> you get somebody crying at school. That's best stuff ever. All right. So, friends, do we feel good with number 19? Is that satisfactory to you? You understand how to, to oh, jump on that? Yeah. I do have one question. So, uh -huh. I got the X correct. And then on the Y, I just plugged the oh. X back into the e. You could have, yeah. Okay. I mean, honestly, I would have done it with Desmos and just got it that way. But if you wanted to work harder, you could certainly do it. Yeah. So for our answer, you want to see those, two those two points. You just list the parentheses with the points in each, and that's done. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. And then number 20, it says that they want us to find the domain of each. So you're going to have each of these. You're going to go y equals uh, the first one. You have to find square root. So square root's right there. Um, I'd probably put this in parentheses because the square root might not keep it grouped. And then if I just go hit click home, notice it starts from right here. 
and goes to the right forever. So the domain of this first one is going to be square bracket 4 to infinity because as I go to the right, the graph exists above it. Okay? And then when I get to the second problem, when I get to the second problem, sometimes it gets harder to find the actual cube root. Let's see if we go into functions. If there's, oops, functions. I'm just seeing if there's any place that has a different root. I just changed it into a um, yeah, fraction. That's what it. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh. You have the nth root, and I don't know why it has the reciprocal cosecant. Okay, so if you once you find this under functions, you're going to put the three right here, and then you're going to put the x right here. And then if you look at the graph, it looks like it's going forever to the left and forever to the right. Okay, so that means our domain would go from negative infinity to positive infinity as a continuous graph. Okay. And then problem number three, just plug it in. You have three divided by, and then on bottom, I might put the bottom in parentheses just so I know it keeps it that way. Okay. So, this is this is called a uh, this is called a rational function. So basically, what you're looking at is you're looking at the blue graph on the the bottom left, and it's going from coming from negative infinity, and it's going up to something. So what you have to do is you you have to think about this. What number would I plug into this denominator to make the denominator zero? What number would I plug in for x to make the denominator 0? 11. 11 minus 8 is 3. Oh. 8. Yeah. So, so x equals, if x is equal to 8, so that vertical line isn't really part of it, but what's taking place with that vertical line as I zoom out, that becomes like a vertical asymptote. And this actually has a horizontal and a horizontal and vertical asymptote. So the x equals 8 is not the thing, but what you have to realize is because that, the graph, as I travel along like this, as I'm, as I'm coming from negative infinity, it's getting really, really, really close to positive 8. And then it's really close, way up here, from positive 8 going to infinity. So what that means is our domain is going to be written like this. Uh, let's go. Let's go here. So x can't equal 8. So that means it's going to go from negative infinity to 8. It's a rounded bracket because we're approaching it. And then it starts back up from 8 to infinity. Okay. What this basically means is this 8 falls into that category. The rounded bracket means we get really close to it. We will never touch it. It's like the game if you have any siblings. When you're riding in the car and you want to drive your parents crazy, Mom, John's touching me. Nope, not touching, not touching. They're getting real close to you. So you're, you're approaching but not touching, so you're acting like you're innocent as a child, which is totally okay with me. Okay, does that make sense? All right, and then let's get rid of this. Come on, come on. And then let's go this way. This is going to be square root, and I again because I have a square root with Desmos. I'm not sure if I just go x squared if the next part would be out of it. So I would just put it in parentheses just to make sure it doesn't. Oh, okay, so I'm just trying to be safe. Oops, minus 16. Oops, something's going on here that shouldn't happen. All right, so if I click home here. Notice my graph kind of looks like it's going, Wah! you know, it's trying to do the YMCA. That's the Y, but your shoulders got in the way. So basically, my domain on this left side is coming from negative infinity all the way to negative 4. Negative 4 has a square bracket. And then it starts again at positive 4, square bracket, positive 4, going forever with a rounded bracket. Okay. And again, these. These do exist. The picture will tell us a lot more when we do it. So on 
letter D, our answer should be um, when we had this. If we plug that in, our domain is going to go from negative infinity to negative 4, square bracket, because that does exist. And then it starts up again, square bracket at positive 4 and goes to infinity. This whole thing is my domain. Okay. And again, use the picture to describe what's taking place for the domain. And then letter E, I'm going to have two um, things on the bottom that don't work. I'm going to get I'm going to get 2 divided by, let's see if I can do this without parentheses, x squared minus 9. Yes, it worked. And so this, this is kind of like the woohoo, all kinds of happy stuff taking place. What basically is taking place is when we're trying to figure this out, this graph exists all the way till I get till negative 3, and then it shoots straight up or it comes really close on the other side. Same thing with this side. So the threes, the reason why the threes are your problem is if you plug three or negative three in to the original equation, it becomes zero in the denominator. So um, this is what I had graphed. If you have a hard time figuring out what this is going to do, you just take the denominator and you set the denominator equal to zero. So add nine to both sides. Root, root, don't forget the plus or minus. And so my graph is going to go from negative infinity to negative 3. And then here's where people miss. It's going to go from negative 3 to 3, and then it's going to go from 3 to infinity. There's three parts to the domain on this problem. Okay, And when you look back at the graph, it might make more sense that the domain is existing. It does exist between negative 3 and positive 3. So that's that middle upside down section. There's something happening in the y direction there. Okay, so how do we feel? Pretty good. Pretty good? All right. Um, yesterday I was playing around with some completing the square, but we also want to review. Hey, when did I say we have a quiz? Wednesday. That's tomorrow. Okay, Desmos is something that you want to use. Okay, so let's take, let's do... Let's do one problem that is a completing the square because I just want to have this as a comfortable thing for you. Okay, if I wanted to, this is not more than likely not going to factor nicely. Perhaps it will, I don't know. But what I want to do is I want to complete the square. Okay, step one, divide everything by the a value. And when I say everything, including the y. That's my very first step. Does that make sense? You'll notice on the 3x squared, you have 3x squared over 3, so the 3s cancel each other out. And the important thing to remember is, remember the y is divided by 3 as well right now. And this is going to be look a little bit different than what we've done. Okay, notice I made a space. Okay, and again, I'm not asking you to be pros of this. I just want to kind of still build this skill. There's something that I have to do to the back and front end. Okay, right now this whole thing is equal. Okay, it's equal. But what I have to realize is once I complete the square, this is going to take place. X, remember this sign comes straight down. Okay, if I want to take half of a fraction, all I do is I double the denominator. If I double 3, what do I get? 6. six. So plus 5 over 6, quantity squared. Okay, now I'm going to square this. So 5 times 5 is 25. 6 times 6 is 36. What happens to the x? Do you just take away for that portion? So if I were, so this region right here, is the complete square. So if I took x plus 5 over 6 times x plus 5 over 6 and I foiled it together, I would get that first three terms. Okay, now here's the important thing. I added here, so that means I have to subtract it here. Okay, this is kind of like the uh, daylight saving time that we do. Okay, 
We're going to cut an hour off the morning and we're going to add it to the end of the day. And then we're going to create more daylight. No, you didn't. Okay? You can't cut the top part of a blanket off and sew it to the bottom part of the blanket to make a longer blanket. Okay? You're like, wait a minute, what? I'm just saying. Okay, so this portion here. Now let's change that color. This portion right here is this right here. Okay? So what you want to do is now I have that fraction on the back end. There's a couple of things that we can do that might make this simpler. Look at where the Y is. Y has a number that is being it's divided by. It's being divided by 3. So it's your choice in which order you want to do this. There's not a right or wrong way to say this. But sometimes if you do it this way, I'm going to multiply this by 3, this by 3. Okay, so that takes care of that. Multiply this by 3 and this by 3. And watch what happens. This 3 cancels this 3. So I get negative 2. This 3 goes into this 36 12 times. Okay? And it, I mean, it's just basically arithmetic, arithmetic that I'm doing, but I'm going to go negative 2 over 1 minus 25 over 12. Okay? And if you do the math, multiply here. So I'm going to get negative 24, multiply here, minus 75 over 12, because you multiply the bottom. So that's going to give me this portion here is negative 99 over 12. This is our completed square. These threes would have canceled each other out. So you get y equals 3 times the quantity x plus 5 over 6 quantity squared minus 99 twelfths. Okay, that's completing the square, different thing. You're not going to need to know that for tomorrow, but I just want to kind of build this completing the square idea onto you. Trust me, if you get this completing the square thing down, you will not have to ever stress dealing with the quadratic formula again. Okay, again, we said the quadratic formula, there's way too many places that sign errors take a place. But what I would like to do is I would like to look only at algebra review review and I would like to look at 1 through 16 so give me an honest look at 1 through 16 and let me know if there's something that you would like me to help you with on 1 through 16 factor completely going right to desmos Oh, because you don't want us to use the method you showed us to use. You don't have to complete the square. I'd go right to Desmos, and wherever it crosses the x-axis, so we get like x equals 6, x equals 6 is x minus 6 is a binomial. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that problem number 8, there might be questions about that one. And you will see one similar to this on tomorrow's test. Desmos will not work on this problem. Now, friends, there's a whole plethora of ways that people would want to do this. I would do it this way because I see it better. 10 is 2 times 5. X to the third is this. Y to the second is this. So I just took care of this. Do you agree with the stuff I have up there? Okay, plus sign comes straight down. 15 breaks up to 3 times 5. X to the fourth is this y to the third is this. Now I'm going to take a look at both. Okay? I have a 5 that they both have. Agree? How many x's can I factor out of both of them? What's the total number of x's that they would share? 3. I have that and I have that. 
What's the most whys they both share? Okay, what I have highlighted is their greatest common factor. Okay, so my answer is 5x to the third because I factored xxx out, y to the second. Now I have a set of parentheses. What do I have left on the very first one? A two. A two? Plus, what do I have left on the second one? A three. Anything else? A one. Anything else? Oh, next. Yeah. I can't read. It happens. I can't write, so. That's the factored version. Okay? So you're going to see one problem like that tomorrow. And my friends, I have no problem how you want to try and do that problem. But it does break down nicely. It does break down quickly. The, th the hard thing to convince students of is, do I have to go 2, 5, X, 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 Y, Y, plus 3, 5, X, 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 Y, 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 Y? No. If you get the answer right, doing it the way you can do it in your head, I mean, a lot of times you can look at it and say, I know they both have a 5. It looks like I can factor X, X, X out or X to the third out. looks like I can factor Y squared out. So it's just how you want to do it. Okay? Is there anything else on from 1 to 16 on that algebra review review that you need me to take care of for you? Again, Desmos will work as long as I have the single variable. If you use Desmos, make sure you do Y equals each one of those in order to get it to solve. And then 11 through 16, you can use Desmos on as well. All you're doing on Desmos on 11 through 16 is you're telling me, you're finding a point where it crosses and you're giving me the X value only. Okay? Is there anything on there that you want me to go over? Review, talk about, make fun of people on? 15? You got it. So number 15, I have 4 raised to the X is equal to 51. Agree? I'm going to go right to our buddy Desmos. And I'm going to graph two things. I'm going to graph y equals 4 raised to the x. That's my first one. And then I'm going to graph y equals 51 for my other one. Okay? I'm going to zoom out so I can find both of my graphs. And it looks like it's taking place right there. You can zoom in on it if you want. Oops, zoom in on it. So your answer on... Number 15, the answer is just 2.836. Ignore the Y. Okay? 16, you got it. And then number 16, I'm going to graph the left side independent of the right side. So the left side is Y equals 2 raised to the I'd make sure that maybe this is in parentheses. X minus 5? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Got you covered. Uh, let's see. And then plus 3. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. There we go. And then y equals 30. And then find where this is at. Looks like it's right there. Do what? The plus 3 comes down. It's not part of the exponent. Is that okay? And so once I find this, I just click here. And my answer is... I ignore the Y value. I just put the X value. I put 9.755. And that's all your answer is. So a lot of times on this uh, quiz tomorrow, if you just looked at the problem and you plugged it into Desmos, you have a pretty good shot of just getting the answer right, having minimal work that you've done. You've done every Desmos did it for you. Okay? But I want to make sure, like, um, number six... You feel comfortable with how number six looks? Okay, if we did number six on Desmos, I'm going to go y equals 5x squared minus 
x plus 12. And so what I'm going to do is just take this back to home. So I have, notice I have 0.6 and I have 4 as my x values. Do you agree with that so far? Okay, so let's, this is where we have to use a little bit of our logic. So I know that x is equal to 0.6, and what was the other one? 4? And x equals 4. Okay, this binomial is easy. Just subtract 4 from both sides. Now we have to sit there and say, well, how am I going to make 0.6 a fraction? 0.6 is the same thing as 6 over 10. Agree? Maybe reduce. So that means x equals 3 over 5. Multiply both sides by the 5. So I get 5x equals 3. So then you get 5x minus 3 because you'd have to subtract it. So this is your answer. Factor completely. It's done. Okay. All right, so give you the opportunity to work on 1 through 16. Bless you. If you have any questions, please feel free to come up to me. Happy to help you. If you have an equal sign, you set the left side equal to y and the right side equal to y. Graph them as two different equations, so 11 through 16. You're graphing each side and finding out where they intersect each other. Okay? Everyone good? All right, I'm going to stop recording.